Thank you, Father, for calling us to hear your word. We ask the Holy Spirit to open our spiritual eyes and ears to receive and understand your words of truth. Help us to grow in your grace and in knowledge of you. Anoint and bless each and every listeners of today's message across the internet. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus, name we pray. Amen. Meditation of the week comes from Psalms 24. Please follow along if you have your Bible. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Selah. The main message comes from Matthew chapter 16, verse 28, through chapter 17, verses 1 through 13. Verily I say unto you, There be some standing here, which shall not taste of death, till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with them. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses. And one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them, and said, Arise, and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man, until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. 
And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias surely shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already. And they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. The name Elias here in um, the gospel according to Matthew is also Elijah found in the Old Testament. Jesus told his people Israel to pray to show what the Father's will is. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, he said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. He said that the purpose of his coming down to the earth from heaven was to accomplish the Father's will. In other words, the first man, Adam, who did not overcome Satan's temptation, handed over the earth, which God had given to him. He gave it up to Satan and told his people to pray for the Father's will, knowing that the earth had become Satan's kingdom. But because God's people did not receive him, God planned to make those who receive the Son of God into God's children and fulfill the Father's will through them. It's true, right? People of Israel didn't receive Jesus as their king. So he reached out to people of the rest of the world, just like us. Koreans, Japanese, um, Americans, black, white, doesn't matter. Anybody else other than people of Israel, he reached out so that they may be saved. Apostle John testified of this in John chapter 1, verses 11 through 13. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. God, through his only begotten son Jesus, to establish his kingdom first in the land of Israel, through the prophet Isaiah, John the Baptist came first and prepared the way for the King Jesus to come. In Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 through 5, it is written as this, The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. John the Baptist, who was the voice of the one who cried out in the wilderness to fulfill the prophet Isaiah's prophecy, cried out to, to the Jews in the wilderness of Judea to prepare the way 
for the Lord Jesus who came in the glory of God. He said this in Matthew chapter 3, verse 2, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But they killed John the Baptist, prophesied by the prophet Isaiah, and did not receive their king, Jesus, but executed him on the cross. Israel is still suffering under Satan's rule. Jesus foretold that the kingdom he was trying to establish in Judea would be taken by the violent ones. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 12, he said this, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. But through his death and resurrection, Jesus planned the kingdom that would be built not only in Israel, but also all over the earth in 2,000 years through his disciples and Christians who believe in him to be children of God. In today's passage, we have a hint of when he will fulfill his kingdom. The Lord showed the visions of his kingdom to Peter John and James, the three disciples, through a vision. In Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, talking with him. Then answered Peter, and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make, make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them, and said, Arise, and be not afraid. At that time, the disciples had no idea what the vision was. It was also unknown why Jesus took them to the high mountain six days later to show them the great scene. Christians today read this scripture but most Christians like the disciples of that time don't know why they were shown it six days later why most Christians like the Jews at the time are in darkness made by the devil in the world so that they cannot see the glorious Christ the Lord spent two days, 2,000 years, after his death and resurrection to take away the sin of the world after he sent the Holy Spirit and 4,000 years before he appeared on the earth. That totals to six days later, or 6,000 years. In other words, he was talking about coming to the world after six days to judge the devil as well as the Antichrist and false prophet. 
that robbed his kingdom by violence, and also to judge all men that had been deceived by the devil to establish his kingdom after six thousand years. If we look to Second Peter chapter three verse eight, we find the explanation of days and years. It says, "But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing: that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day." So, for God, a thousand years is like a day to Him. The transfiguration scene of Matthew chapter seventeen. Um, it's also written in Revelation chapter eleven, so in future, this is to be fulfilled. The two witnesses, Moses and Elijah, they're also written in about them are written in chapter eleven in Revelation. When Jesus came to be the King of the Jews two thousand years ago, no one. Knew Jesus was the King to establish the kingdom of heaven in the land of Judah, only except the shepherds, the wise men from the east, and a few people like Simeon and Anna, because they never tried to search the scriptures. What about nowadays, two thousand years later? There are so many churches, and the people confessing themselves as the servants of God all over the world, but most of them are blind, leading the blind, wandering in darkness. They do not know Lord Jesus, who is coming to the earth again to judge the world. They are rather deceived by the whole church, that is, the Roman Catholic, putting themselves into the pit. What a sad story it is! Hearing that all religions are united by the Pope, they don't know what that means. They don't know what it is when they hear about Middle East peace treaty. Either today we must once again realize the meaning of the word that Jesus commanded his disciples before he ascended to heaven. The Lord's final command is that only Christians who believe and are looking for the Lord's kingdom shall understand what it means. And he said this in Acts chapter one verse eight. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. The Lord's、uh, final command stands true to this day for us saved Christians. This is why we testify and preach the gospel of Christ. Be it Mexico, be it somewhere in California, Chicago, New York, wherever you may be, in season or out of season. At that time, the disciples were thinking only about the kingdom of Christ in the land of Israel, but the Lord spoke of the spiritual kingdom of God that shall come in them that believe in Him, upon hearing the gospel of Christ, as well as the kingdom of Christ, to be done when He come again after He judge the world. By preaching the gospel of gospel of Christ, grace, until He comes, we should be prepared to be the pure bride, 
blameless, spotless, being his helper for the work of his kingdom in all the earth. May the grace of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus, be with you all. Amen. This week's message and previous recordings can be found on our website at WGMI.org. That's WGMI.org. You can also find us on podcast and on YouTube by searching WGM Church in the search field. For Android users, you can find us through TuneIn app. That's T-U-N-E-I-N by also typing WGM Church in the search field. 